Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. As we begin this time of prayer, let us sign ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Word of God tells us in Isaiah 45 verses 4 to 6. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Yes, Lord, truly there is no one like you. And we have come to worship you. Welcome, dear, to the courts of the King. I've been ushered into your presence. Lord, I stand on your merciful ground, yet with every step tread with reverence. And I'll fall face down as your glory shines. like you and upon the earth who's your equal you are high above you're the highest of heights we are bowing down to exalt you
in our series of family the importance of every member is being shared for the last couple of days the role of a man the role of a woman the role of children and each one of us has a role and a responsibility to play in family as the family goes so the society goes normally people who are famous you'll always try to backtrack them and find out which family do they belong to building a strong family is building a strong domestic church my topic today is on prayer and holiness and both of them are two pillars in a family without prayer holiness can't be accomplished and both of them are needed in the family our benchmark for us is Jesus. If you read the gospel of Luke chapter 11 verse 1 it says he was praying in a certain place and when he finished praying the disciples said Lord teach us to pray. He who prays in the book of James it tells us his house is surrounded with a wall that is stronger than iron. What is prayer? Prayer is maybe a dialogue with a conversation with God. Do we need to keep a specific time for prayer? Surely I will tell you yes. Because minus keeping a special time for prayer, we find it difficult. Most of us will say our mundane activities take over. Sometimes we say no, we do it later, later, later and later never happens. Praying is being with Jesus. Knowing Him, to love Him and to serve Him. That's what the Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us. Because with prayer we get to know God. You know when we are, take our children out to any place, the first thing if it's a new place they will ask, is there Wi-Fi around there? God is like that Wi-Fi. He's there everywhere. And the only way to connect with Him is prayer. There are three types of prayers which we all know. One is personal prayer, the other is family prayer, and finally community prayer. Today I share more on personal prayer, the importance of it and family prayer. God created us in his image and likeness. In his divine image, in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 it tells us we are created in the image and likeness of God. Here I'd like to share a short story that I read about a little boy who went up to his mother and asked him, asked her, whose image and likeness are we created? And the mother turned around and told him, we are wonderfully, beautifully created in the image and likeness of our Heavenly Father. The boy was seven years old, not very satisfied with this answer. He went to the father. Now when he went to the father, the father gave him evolution theory. He said our ancestors were apes, monkeys, then men. Poor little boy, confused, he went back to the mother and he says, Mom, whose image and likeness are we creating? Again, the mother begins with the same story. We are wonderfully and beautifully created in the image and likeness of our Heavenly Father. The boy said, but Dada says, our ancestors were apes, monkeys and men. She looked at the boy and said, you know what, he's talking about his side of the family. I am talking about my side of the family. Today on whose side of the family are we? Because prayer gives us an experience in family life. What do we learn from this family is about love and acceptance. What do we learn about the family is where we express our emotions. And what do we learn about God in this family through prayer and holiness is who we are created in him. So when we know about these basic aspects of prayer, the first ingredient that you realize is you are a gift from God. Prayer teaches you that. You know, children are fruit of the womb. The book of Psalms 127 verses 3 to 5 tells us that they are a gift given to us. You and I too are children of our earthly parents. And we too are gifts. 
Our children are gifts given to us. The second ingredient prayer teaches you is you are loved unconditionally. And the same unconditional love that you will receive from the Father, you share it with your family. You know, in my years of serving, and I have a family of four kids. One, of course, today is not with me, but I always have one plus my younger sister's kids. Have. One studied in Rentvat, now the other one is with me. And in our journey with all of them, we have realized all of us make mistakes. Even I have made several mistakes. But from the Heavenly Father, I learned that His love was unconditional. And so, in maybe our flawed circumstances, we communicate the same to our children. If you can communicate this unconditional love, not that they are not to be reprimanded when they make a mistake, but prayer teaches us that His love is unconditional for us. So also, our love is supposed to be unconditional to the ones who are placed in our care. The fruit of prayer, what are the fruit of prayer? The fruit of prayer is that you start understanding one another. Each one of us are different. Like I said, I come and I live in a home which is pretty big. By modern standards, we are a very big family. But because of prayer, because of that personal relationship with Jesus, we are able to understand each other. No two people in the home are the same. You might have one who is very enthusiastic, while the other could be very pessimistic. One will find in a white sheet a black dot and the other one who might not find anything at all. Like I have one daughter who is constantly singing, constantly happy. In fact, when she was little and went to school, right from the gate till the end, till she reached the class, we would see her calling out to people. One of them in the family is very reserved. So he would say, why is she going on like this? But then we have realized each one of them is different. Like one is cognitive, who love to study, plan, throw, plan, everything. The other one can't even stand at time table. And I'm still trying to get that one to get a time table done. But yet it doesn't seem easy with him. So each one of us have different flaws. But when you communicate to the Father in prayer, these things become much easier to understand. The second fruit of prayer is communication. When you start praying with God and you start talking to God, the same spirit is you want to communicate with others. A family that feels together, heals together. In this time of pandemic, as we are going through the different challenges, I will share with you with one of my kids who is not here. During this pandemic, he lost his job. And at the time when he lost his job, it was very difficult. The next six months were a real challenge. But through that, more than me, I'd see my husband consistently speaking to him, no matter whether it was three in the morning, whether it was six in the evening, but day in, day out. And encouraging him to pray. And after three months of encouragement, I see him developing a relationship in prayer. The fruit of that prayer was that he was able to sustain himself in a country which was not very friendly, in a country where he was lonely because a family that feels together, heals together. The second thing that prayer, the fruit of prayer is you learn to keep commitments. Sometimes you keep commitments outside. You're very, like if your boss tells you something, you'll surely keep a commitment. But fruit of prayer teaches you to keep commitments with people whom you love. A family that you stay with, you will find them very important. Like there are times on a Friday, right now of course we are in lockdown. I generally will go out with my husband on a date. And recently, my one of the priest friends asked me, Anastasia, I hope you still keep up to that commitment. And I shared with him, Father, right now we are on lockdown. He said, I hope you don't break that habit. And what is that commitment? That commitment is telling the other person you are important. 
Surely we have challenges. Surely we find other things more important. But when you invest in a relationship, the fruit of prayer gives the other person respect. Respect every person in your home. Once you start respecting God, respecting people in your home is not so difficult. If you respect your parents, especially your elderly parents, I assure you, your children will respect you. Children do not read a gospel, the only gospel that they read is our lives. And I request all those who are married and have senior parents, make time for them. Because respecting them is another fruit of prayer. You know, when we are younger, we used to give teaching, especially on honor your mother and father so that all may go well with you. I always say, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 2 and 3, even today, that holds firm. If you honor your mom and dad, all will be well with you. Ask and offer encouragement, the food, fruit of prayer. People are very discouraged. You now, recently I heard a sermon given by a priest, and he said that you need not be a preacher or anyone, but anyone can offer a message of hope. Because we are living in a world where the pandemic has not only cost us our jobs, our happiness, our future, many things have been set back. But words of encouragement help people to remember that there is a God above. So encouragement by smiling and offering small words. You know, they are small gifts. I keep smiling and everyone in the house says, why are you smiling? Are you pulling our legs? And I say, no, it's not wrong to smile because it's only three muscles to smile, 72 to frown. And if you don't want to grow older, please smile at those around you. Because when you smile, the difficulty that you're going through becomes much easier. Communication is very important. Prayer leads you to the family altar. And the family altar is where not only we pray together, but we feel it together. Family prayer is the fruit of personal prayer. If you are sitting as a family to pray, I assure you, your home will be fortified with pillars that will not be shaken. You know, many years ago, because I had said I have a large family, there was a difficulty sometimes to have rosary every day. So we started with two days of praise and worship, two days of word of God, and two days of rosary. Most of us find it easy to pray the rosary. But many of our children don't find it. They find it repetitive. They cannot understand that it is contemplation of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Many of them, when you start the first second, they're fast asleep. So find a way where your family will be very much participating in the family prayer. Because family prayer is very vital, especially at this time for sustenance. We have gone through many challenges in the last nine months. One challenge has been our business. But because of family prayer and each one nudging each other, things have not been as difficult as they would have been. So, when we move from a life of prayer, the next part, the call to holiness, is not so difficult. You say holiness is only meant for a certain category of people. No, it's not only for religious. It is for every member of the family. Because the book of Peter, 1 Peter 2, 9 tells us, You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. You and I have a call. In family, we have a call. And the call gives us specific four things. The first thing we have chosen. Now, whenever you think of yourself chosen, I know when you're young and you're chosen for the team or you're taken as a leader, you feel so special. But here you and I are chosen by Jesus. The second thing, a chosen person is called to a royal priesthood, a holy nation. This call is for every one of us. 
to be only like our heavenly father and finally God's special possession any special piece that you have in your house you will put it on a lampstand you won't keep it hiding and you and I are called that so there are four ingredients or four things that are required to live this holy life you know when you go to college and the first thing when you join if you're in the 11th grade you look for company you want company that you can be very comfortable with in this life and journey of holiness the first thing that you need is the company of jesus the second thing is the word of god there's not a single day that goes by when we don't read god's word god's word is very important for us our faith is built on two things primary is the word of god secondary is the sacraments but we need god's word the third thing is sacraments which is daily not once in a way once in a week but daily right now with the pandemic we have been set to that but yet every one of us has had the opportunity to participate in the eucharist to participate in things that are beyond and this thing that brings us closer to jesus fellowship another thing is very important in this journey of holiness is fellowship each one of us needs fellowship to know each other to love each other to stand with each other because on this journey second corinthians 5:20 tells us we are ambassadors for christ and christ is making his appeal to us if god doesn't give a good picture of us we don't give a good picture of ourselves we are not going to be able to make an appeal to others because like clay is in a potter's hand so are we in god's hand don't worry about how would you do it how will i work this holy life how will i do it we are all trusted in god's hand so the steps to holiness just like you walking you have to take gentle steps the first thing is prayer our benchmark is jesus jesus went up to the mountain to pray the second thing when he was praying his face was radiant you now when you sit in the presence of god your life your bright face will be what others want of you your children or your spouse who's looking towards you will want to come to you because of the bright shine that you achieved and you sat in prayer after you pray love becomes easy and perfect love casts out all fear you know today all of us are scared we are scared about the job we are scared about the finances we are scared if i touch someone i want to assure you read 1 john 4:18 perfect love casts out all fear because if christ had fear the cross would have been very heavy because without love the cross would be heavy but without the cross love would be empty and so today when you are doing something for your family one of the greatest thing is you're doing it out of love if your you know love is not an emotion or a feeling it is because of commitment that you are made to take care of your home no matter how difficult it is this is one of the challenges is holiness that love in spite of all my circumstances trust just as god trusted us with his mission we have to learn to trust god and trust our family members because once trust is broken it's very difficult no matter how difficult your circumstances ask god to give you trust you know i used to read many lives of many saints and one of the saints that i visited some years ago was saint teresa of little flower as i was going through her reflections one of the reflections that touched me was what hurts the heart of jesus is the lack of confidence and finally second corinthians chapter 4 verses 8 to 10 when we lead this life of holiness it says we are hard pressed on every side crushed but not given perplexed but not given into despair persecuted but not abandoned but not destroyed struck down but not destroyed for we carry in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be revealed if you have prayer and holiness in your life automatically no 
matter what challenge you're going through, this life will become much more easy, much more meaningful. You may ask yourself, why do I need a life of prayer and holiness to sustain my family? Because it gives you the grace to willingly accept whatever comes your way. I will share with you just a week ago, my husband had an accident and we were not in the city. He broke his wrist. I happened to have a friend who is a surgeon, who is my 6 o'clock morning friend. When I called him up, he said, you have to drive back. Somehow the local doctor put in a, put in a not a cast, uh, support for his hand. When we came to Bombay, uh, when I went in, I had to do a lot of tests. But ultimately on Wednesday, this, the surgery was successful with a lot of support. Surely many asked me, but take care of yourself. There's COVID in the hospital. There's so many things that are happening. But God gives us the grace to accept whatever comes our way. He gives us the grace to strength to face at it. And when you walk a life of prayer and holiness, you will stand firm and know that the Lord is with you. This life of prayer and holiness, finally can, we can say like Paul, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I've kept up the faith. Now I know they stored for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will reward me on that day. Not only me, but to all those who have longed for his appearing. I'd like to share with you that as you walk on this journey, don't forget four things. The company of Jesus, the word of God, the sacraments, and your fellowship with one another. And a family that prays together stays together. A family that feels together, heals together. Amen. For a reflection, I'll ask Simone to take a hymn. We are the Lord's own family. As we walk side by side And as love becomes a Join hands and be one family Because God's love is what the world should see And as we build each other up He fills our hearts with His